If you're new to editing and new to reframing 360 videos, or you're new to this particular software, this video will guide you through step by step how to use the latest version of Insta360 Studio. This software does have some limitations though, so later in this video I'll introduce you to another free desktop video editing software called Videoproc Vlogger, and they kindly sponsored this video as well. And this free software will enable you to properly finish your Insta360 reframed edits. So let's get straight to it. Once you've downloaded Insta360 Studio directly from insta360.com, you then need to open up the software and import some photos or videos. The easiest way to do that is select the large yellow open icon. Navigate to the folder on your computer where you have your files and then select them. Each video photo you have taken will have two files associated with it, one for each lens, so make sure you bring in both files. Okay, so now we have opened our files, before we start to edit, let's take a look at the overall layout. At the top we have file, which you can also use for opening files and exporting your project. We then have edit, I never use this, but what it does do is give you a list of all the shortcuts you can use on the keyboard for editing your footage. Also, if you want to clear all your keyframes or your speed settings, or take a snapshot from your video, you can also go to this edit tab. Under the play tab, you also have some more keyboard shortcuts, and you can also change whether your clip loops when it comes to the end for playback. So basically it starts again when it's finished playing. Under settings, if you have a PC, then this tab's very important. Sometimes when you update the software on some computers, when you export, all you see is a green screen, and this is because you have to go to settings and preferences and deselect this box here, enable CUDA acceleration. And if you select other, you can also change where your project is saved. Under the window tab, you can select what you want to appear on your screen when you're editing, but I usually just leave all of these selected so I can see all of the windows like you see here. In this area here on the left is where you'll see your footage, your photos and your videos. And this icon here will display all files open from your computer. And this icon will show files imported straight from your camera and this icon will show your favorite files, which I'll come back to in a minute. And finally, this icon shows your export history and your export queue. Here, with the drop-down arrow, you can arrange your files by size, date, etc., and then have them in ascending or descending order. To mark a clip as your favorite, click on the clip and then select the star icon in the bottom right-hand corner of the thumbnail. These clips will then appear under favorites, which we looked at a minute ago and you can move down your clips using the slider here to the right of the thumbnails. These three icons here allow you to switch between a large thumbnail view of your clips, a small thumbnail with some file info, or a list view so you can see the file numbers and dates. If you want to look at the file properties of your image, you can select this icon, which will bring up more information including camera type, resolution, etc. And if you want to delete any of your clips, first select your clip and then select the bin icon here. If you hover over any thumbnail and move your mouse from left to right, you'll be able to scan through your entire clip. This is your main viewing window in the middle where you'll see your clips played. And at the top, the default is reframed, which is what the majority of you will use to reframe your 360 images. If, however, you want to use a native 360 image and create a 360 VR video, then select the icon here, which is the 360 view. Over to the settings on the far right, we have six icons. The first is stabilization, and this is where you can switch flow state stabilization on and off, as well as select direction lock, which we'll look at in a minute. The stitching icon is where if you have used the dive case or a lens guard, then you can select the appropriate setting here, which will adjust the stitching. And if you have any stitching issues, you can calibrate the stitching here, or try toggling these two boxes on and off, as sometimes the stitch line is better when they are deselected. And if you stop the video at a point where you want to try and improve the stitching, you can then select Calibrate here at the bottom. The third icon down is Media Processing. Here we can turn AquaVision on and off if we shot underwater, and we can also enhance the audio using the True Audio feature. I personally don't like the True Audio feature, so I always leave this off. If you want to include the Insta360 logo, you can switch that on here by selecting one of these five styles, and you can change the size and the position of the logo by adjusting it here and selecting bottom, top, left or right. The project management icon allows you to work on several projects and save them using different names. So project one here, we can rename by clicking on this point here, and we can then create a new project by clicking here and again renaming it in the same way. We can then create different versions of the same clips and then switch between them to compare them. 
and the final icon under file properties we can look at more detailed information about your photo or video clip. And to close these tabs you simply select the cross icon here. Moving over to the playback screen you can play your clip or skip to the end or the beginning using these three icons here in the bottom left. If at any point you want to see your viewing window full screen then you can select this icon here and then select it again to go back. So you should now be familiar with the general layout and there are a lot of icons we haven't covered but we'll cover those as we go through the editing process. We'll start by first looking at a photo. The photo appears on the screen by default as native 360 image and we can move the photo around by clicking and holding on the left mouse button and dragging it around. If we use the mouse wheel we can also zoom in and out. We can also switch the view of the photo here by switching between default view, tiny planet, crystal ball, natural view and flat view. And to create an inverted planet select tiny planet and then drag the image downwards with the mouse. And when you're happy with how your image looks you can take a snapshot here and choose where you want it to save and it will save it as a JPEG. There's not a lot else that can be done with photos in this software so now let's move on to video. There are two ways you can edit your video using the Insta360 software. One is a manual edit which will be the main subject of this video and the other is using the AI. I don't use the AI to edit myself because it takes too long to analyse the footage and then it only comes up with a few basic shots and I'd rather have the control of editing them myself and creating them a lot more quickly. But if you do want to experiment with it then you can select this brain icon in the bottom right of your video clips. And as soon as you select it, the software will start analysing your footage and create a number of different clips automatically. And the clips that it creates will appear here underneath the main viewing window. So now onto the manual editing. So first select the video clip that you want to edit and double click. The clip will open in your main viewing window and as you move your mouse along your timeline, which is here, you will see thumbnails appear to show you that particular point of your clip. You can make the timeline bigger or smaller by sliding this slider here. For shorter clips of say 10 minutes or less I usually adjust it completely towards the minus sign so I can see the entire clip at the bottom as I find it easier to work with. If your clip is bigger though you may have to scroll along your clip using the slider at the bottom here. The clip will open in the reframed viewing window as most people want to reframe their clips and create a flat video. If however you want to create an immersive 360 video you have to select the 360 viewing window here at the top. And here you can look around your 360 image using the mouse as discussed before. And you can switch your field of view here between tiny planet, flat view etc. But when you export the video it will still be a native 360 video. You can change the length of your clip by trimming the start and the end points by left clicking and dragging in the thick white lines at the start and the end of the clip to where you want it to start and end. To quickly get to a certain point on the timeline, simply move your mouse along the timeline and then left click on the point where you want to get to and the video will jump to that section. And you can jump to the trim start point and the end points simply by selecting these two icons. Also in this native 360 mode you can adjust the speed of your clip by selecting the time shift icon here. Move the cursor to the point where you want your clip to speed up and then click on the time shift icon. Now move your mouse along the timeline to the point where you want the increase speed to stop and then click. You will see a two times appear at the bottom. This is for two times speed and if you want to change this speed then left click on two times and you'll see a pop up box appear here where you can change the speed selected from a quarter speed right up to 64 times. You can then select other points on the timeline where you want to adjust the speed as well and you can do this as many times as you want. And when you're ready you can export your clip by selecting this icon in the bottom right hand corner. And we'll talk more about exporting towards the end of the video. So now onto free capture and manual reframed editing. This is where we reframe our clip and make it look and move how we want it to. And this is how I use 360 video 99.9% .9 of the time and I'm guessing that most of you watching will be doing the same. So the first thing you do is to select your clip and then select the reframe icon at the top. Now select your aspect ratio, so this is the frame size of your shot, and you can do that here by selecting 1x1, 9x16, 16x9, or 2.35 to 1. Now trim your clip as we did before. Now to add a keyframe, you select the keyframe icon here, and a yellow circle will appear on the timeline. 
So when we select a keyframe, we're telling the software at that point that we've marked, we want something to happen and we want something to change. So select the type of shot that you want from these icons we saw before that are now above our keyframe. So we have default, tiny planet, crystal ball or natural. And I'm going to start with the default fish icon. Now move the mouse on the screen to where you want the shot to begin from. I'm going to move to my point of view on the bike. Now play the clip and then pause it at the point you want the clip to change again. And remember as soon as the video hits a keyframe when it's playing it will then start to transition to the next keyframe. And this makes the transition smooth from one keyframe to the next. So if you want the transitions to take longer you can move the keyframes further apart. And you can do this by left clicking and then dragging the keyframe along the timeline. If you want to delete a keyframe at any point, then select the keyframe and then click on the cross underneath here. Or just right click and select delete. You can even come out to a tiny planet shot from a standard view using the same process. So input another keyframe, now select the tiny planet and fine tune your shot on the screen with the mouse. To preview your transition, drag the mouse back to the previous keyframe and then press play or to watch the whole sequence, select this icon and then press play. Continue the process and input keyframes until you reach the end of your clip. Now if you want to, you can make adjustments to how the keyframe transitions from one keyframe to another. So click on the line in between the keyframes and then go to the transitions menu that pops up here and experiment with the different transition types. If you're a numbers person rather than a visual person or if you want to fine tune your shot, you can adjust all of the specifics of your shot here by clicking and dragging the arrows left or right or by inputting a specific angle into the box. On this opening shot, for example, if the horizon wasn't level, which is the roll angle, I could select the keyframe I've made and then click and hold the left mouse button over roll and move left or right to correct the horizon. And you can also adjust here the pan angle, the tilt angle, the field of view and the distance. And the keyboard shortcuts that I use are spacebar for playing and pausing and the arrow keys for advancing one frame at a time when I want to make very specific adjustments to my clips. The other features that we can use are direction lock which is up here and that locks the shot to the direction of the camera. So here with direction lock off the shot gets very ugly because the bike has changed direction but we haven't locked the camera position. If we now select direction lock, the camera follows me around smoothly and stays locked on me. You can also use the time shift feature here as we did before with the 360 clip by selecting this icon here. Here we're going to use deep track which is the desktop tracking feature. So find your subject in the video, now select the deep track icon and then left click and drag a square over your subject. The AI will now track your subject in the shot and keep them in the middle of your frame. It's that simple. Before we move on to talk about exporting your clip, you may have noticed there are a few key features that I haven't mentioned when it comes to editing, and that includes adding titles, adding music, and joining multiple clips together. And that is because unfortunately, Insta360 Studio doesn't support these features. And this is where the VideoProc Vlogger software comes in because it will allow you to properly finish your Insta360 videos. The free desktop editor is really easy to use and it allows you to import your own music, join all your reframe clips together and add titles. And as well as this you can also choose from dozens of transitions and dozens of really cool special effects. And you also have full control over your image and can adjust the contrast, the saturation, the brightness etc and apply filters and you can even add your own LUTs. And there are two really cool features in the software which are motion effects and speed ramping. But before you use VideoProc Vlogger, you first need to export your reframe clips in Insta360 Studio. So let's take a look at that now. To export your individual clips so that they are ready to use in VideoProc Vlogger, first hit the large yellow export icon. Ensure that you've selected reframe video. You can change the file name, but don't change the file extension. So your file name must end in .mp4. You can then select here where you want your clip to be saved. And all these changes can be saved as an export preset by selecting the drop down preset parameters here. And it means you don't have to then put them in next time. Increase the bitrate to 100 to match the camera's bitrate. You can change the resolution here. So I'm going to export at 4K, so I'll change it to 3840 by 2160. Select your preferred encoding format here, so I'll just match the codec that we recorded in, which was H.265. 
You can then select the Remove Grain AI effect here and you can select Color Plus here as well. Only choose Remove Grain if you're really pushing your shots and you're shooting in really dark situations because sometimes it really doesn't do justice to your images. And the same with the Color Plus. The Color Plus gives your images a lot more saturation and makes your images pop but it doesn't look good every time, so just experiment. You can then add your clip to an export queue or start export straight away. And if you want to properly finish your Insta360 edits, you'll want to watch this video next, which goes into more detail about the VideoProc software and shows you how to add titles, add music, and join multiple clips together and a lot more. My name's Rich, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.